All right, all right, Rad Nation. Today we're going to be talking about protective devices, primarily shielding devices that you will wear as a radiologic technologist. What are they made of and how thick are they? Coming up here at How Radiology Works. Let's start off by thinking about an interventional setting. In this interventional setting, you'll have your patient here. You'll have your x-ray tube here. You'll have your detector, flat panel detector, or an image intensifier up here. You'll have x-rays coming in. Those x-rays are either going to pass all the way through the patient. Some of the x-rays will stop in the patient due to photoelectric effect. And then other x-rays will actually scatter. And as they come through, they can scatter in different directions. This can lead to degradation in the image quality. It also can lead to stray radiation inside of the room. As a technologist, you're typically standing somewhere out here, helping control the technical parameters of your system. If you're standing somewhere out here, we've talked about the different aspects. One of them is one over R squared. If you get further away, this radiation will be spreading out more. Another one is trying to reduce the time that you're around this radiation. And then finally, you can have shielding. If we think about shielding, if we put on a nice little apron right here, all right, what would we like this apron to be made out of? And how thick does this apron need to be? And like we talked about within the body, photoelectric, where we're stopping the x-rays, or Compton, those are our primary interactions within the diagnostic x-ray spectra. The same thing is true within the material that you're using for your shielding, you can either have photoelectric or Compton interactions as the primary. The idea is that you would really like to have photoelectric interactions because you want the radiation to stop right within that shield. You do not want it to actually come through, scatter, pass through radiation through the shield itself, which would then potentially interact with you. By Photo. You'd like to have is a material which is dominated by the photoelectric effect. Do you remember when we talked about the photoelectric effect? What property of the material actually influences the photoelectric effect the most? Photoelectric effect is actually due to the nuclear interaction inside the nucleus. The thing that matters most is how many protons you have in that nucleus. We call that the atomic number. We call that Z. Things that have a high atomic number, a lot of times these things will actually be heavy also, right? Because as you add more protons, more neutrons, then the electron cloud gets larger also. You end up with heavier atoms, <clears throat> which then also make heavier molecules. A high Z is something we like to have here. And what turns out is that the material that has this high Z that we use most often is called lead. We use lead because of the high Z, because of the high photoelectric effect. Then the next question is, how thick does that lead need to be? Typically, in a fluoroscopy setting, we might be having x-rays with a KVP 60, 70 KVP, for instance, in order to pass through the patient, but in order to get a good contrast with our iodinated objects within the patient. So if the x-rays are of the 60 to 70 kVp, remember the average energy within that is going to be lower in terms of the keV. And then the energy of these scattered x-rays that are coming out here, this energy is going to be in the mid-40s of the keV on average. We have x-ray photons that are in the mid-40s of the keV on average and we would like to stop them with a very high likelihood. We can use something called Beer's Law to actually calculate the amount of x-rays or the intensity of x-rays that are coming through compared with the x-rays which were initially incident on our shield. Let's just e to the minus mu x, where 
mu is what we call the linear attenuation coefficient. That's the property of the material. X is actually the thickness. Both of those things will impact how many x-rays get stopped. Something that's thicker and something that has a higher attenuation coefficient. This table here is actually for 0 0.5 millimeters of lead. If you have 0 0.5 millimeters of lead and the energy of 50 keV, you're going to stop 99% of the x-rays. If the energy is 60 keV, 94%, and so on. And like we talked about, those scattered x-rays have a lower energy than the primary x-rays that were coming in. We're going to be stopping actually more than 99% of the x-rays if we have 0.5 millimeters of lead. That's why the answer to the question of what material do we use predominantly for protection in radiation, especially in the diagnostic radiation, is for you as a technologist, we're using lead because it has a high Z and the thickness we're using is 0.5 millimeters. Part of dealing with the lead protected devices is also to regularly be doing inspections on those devices. Because if you think about if you had a sheet of lead that was your primary actually protective device and there was a crack in that sheet of lead or a hole in that sheet of lead, that actually could preferentially let x-rays pass through that crack. You want to regularly be doing inspections of your lead, tactile and visual inspections, in order to make sure that you do not have actual holes or cracks within your lead. Next, check out our video on the three pillars of radiation safety.